welcome to Blood Talks. Today, we will be talking about Irish Immunoglobulin or RHIG. In this video, I will include all the nitty gritty of what, when, where, who, why, and how often you should be getting it. I will also talk about how RHIG works and any complications that may come with receiving or not receiving RH immunoglobulin. What is RHIG? RH is the abbreviation for rhesus, which is a name for one of many blood group antigens on the red blood cells. Antigens are red blood cell surface molecules, which can either be proteins or sugar complexes. The most well-known blood group antigen is ABO blood group. If you want to know more about blood group antigens, please leave me a comment down below and I will make another video dedicated to blood group antigen. IG is the abbreviation for immunoglobulin. For this video, I will refer to Irish immunoglobulin as RSIG. RSIG is a medication that is prescribed to a childbearing patient with Rh negative to prevent the patient from developing antibody, anti-D. RSIG can be administered by intramuscular injection or intravenous depending on the type of RSIG that was prescribed to the patient. The first step to determine if a patient is an Rh negative patient or not is that the phlebotomist draw your blood and sends the sample to the laboratory. Then the clinical laboratory scientist or CLS perform blood tests. CLS are those that perform tests on all kinds of bodily fluids and send the test results to doctor, who then gather all the information and proceeds with necessary treatments for their patient. If it is determined that the patient is an Irish negative person, CLS will check the pregnancy status. If the physician did not order a pregnancy test, CLS will ask the physician to order one. This will help determine whether the patient needs the Irish IG or not. When and how often should you be getting or at least consider getting an RSIG? Patients who are not pregnant do not need an RSIG. Normally, pregnant patients with RH negative should be getting an RSIG around 28 weeks of gestation and another dose once the baby is delivered, unless the newborn is also an RH negative baby. A pregnant patient with RH negative may be candidate for RH IG even before 28 weeks of gestation if the patient has vaginal bleeding due to trauma to abdominal area. A patient would be a candidate for a booster shot of an RH IG if the initial dose was more than 12 weeks prior to due date. The patient should receive another dose of RH IG if her baby is RH positive. If the baby is in fact an RH positive baby, a test must be performed to determine the amount of RHIG the patient would need. If you want to know more about the testing and how it's done, please leave me a comment down below in the comment section. Irish negative mother with the true anti-D. This means the patient has been previously exposed and sensitized. In this case, RHIG will not be given because the patient's own body is already making an anti-D. There are other pregnancy complications that an RHIG would be recommended for. Some examples are miscarriage, abortion, atopic pregnancy. RHIG is also given to expected mother who undergo invasive procedures during pregnancy, such as amniocentesis. Amniocentesis is a procedure in which a sample of amniotic fluid from the uterus is drawn for testing or treatment. Who should be concerned about receiving RHIG? Rh can cause intravascular hemolysis in Rh positive patients, which can lead to anemia and multiple system organ failure. Patients who have history of allergic reaction to RHIG, keep in mind that RHIG is like any other medication. There are many different types and brands that develop this medicine. The most common trait names is Rogam. If you are allergic to Rogam, it doesn't mean you cannot receive another type or brand of RHIG. However, if the patient has experienced an allergic reaction before when receiving RHIG, the patient should be observed for about 20 minutes after administration for signs and symptoms of allergic reaction. RHIG comes from donated plasma. It can contain a small amount of IgA and can cause allergic reaction in patients with IgA deficiency. There are different processing types of RHIG. 
and some may be suitable for people with IgA deficiency, so please consult your doctor in choosing the right arch Ig for you. What are the things that the patient should be considered before receiving Ars Ig? Ars Ig is a human product. It is a purified human plasma containing anti-D. Plasma comes from donors who go through infectious disease screening and testing. It is heavily regulated by FDA. However, these donated plasma still carry risk for transmitting infectious disease. Another risk factor is that the patient can be exposed to transient antibody. In general, patient develops antibodies when exposed to foreign antigens. Some of the ways that the patient can be exposed to foreign antigens are through pregnancy, sharing needle, blood transfusions, and transplant. This transient antibody is not to be confused with antibody that the patient body generates once exposed to foreign antigen. This transient antibody will no longer be detected or cause any problem to the patient after a few months. However, during the time that the transient antibody can be detected, this transient antibody can cause problems for both the mother and the fetus. What are the complications that the patient can face if they are not receiving RHIG or not receiving enough doses of RHIG? Arch-negative mothers who does not receive RHIG have about 10 to 16% chance of developing a true anti-D. The anti-D can cross the placenta and attack fetus red blood cells, which can lead to miscarriage and other newborn complications in subsequent pregnancies. How does RHIG work? RSIG works by preventing the Rh negative mother from making a true anti D antigen against her Rh positive baby. Once the patient receives an RSIG, the anti D in the RSIG circulating in the mother blood will take care of cells with D antigen before she gets synthesized and make her own anti D. As long as Rh negative mother receives appropriate dose of RSIG during the pregnancy, she has a low risk of developing anti-D and the baby has a low risk of developing hemolytic disease of a newborn. If you want to know more about RHIG, please let me know and I can make a part 2 of RHIG. There are many more details than what I can put into this one video. I hope you enjoyed this and learned something new. Please like, subscribe and I'll see you in the next episode of Blood Talk. And as always remember, your blood can tell the story of your health. Bye!